Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And also, I want to thank you for your commitment to, to work with me and, and my home state uh, on the consent-based siting process in order to find a, a suitable uh, repository for our nation's nuclear waste. And I greatly appreciate the discussion draft that you put forward, uh, which includes text from my bill, S-541, Nuclear Waste Informed Consent Act. I look forward to continuing that work to amplify uh, the Blue Ribbon Panel Commission's um, uh, uh, report that came out. Uh, Dr. Huff, let me start with you. Since the mid-1970s, it's been suggested that the nuclear waste disposal program should be managed uh, by a standalone single-purpose agency, and that an agency separate from the Department of Energy would better manage long-term waste repository. Does the Department support the establishment of a nuclear waste administration or similar new uh, independent executive agency to take on the responsibilities of the nuclear waste program um, and what would be the benefit of separating these responsibilities beyond DOE's administration? Uh, the administration hasn't taken a particular position on that, but I will say it, the effect would certainly be to reduce the year-on-year -year uncertainty of appropriating the nuclear waste fund and would enable that administration to uh, separately and independently move forward uh, without sort of annual uncertainty uh, if they were to be given access to the nuclear waste fund. Um, and I think, you know, there is a potential a uh, lot of benefit to that. But the department hasn't taken a position on its support of an independent agency or not? Uh, no, the administration has not. Or excuse me, the administration. Okay, thank you. Uh, when it comes to all aspects of the nuclear fuel cycle, can you uh, expand on the importance for engagement and consent from all stakeholders, including state, local, tribal, and private input? Yeah, state, local, tribal, and private interests around consent are critical. We need consent that is broad and deep, passing through the hierarchy from federal, state, to local, to individuals uh, in communities. And I think what we're seeking in our consent-based siting process is more capacity building around the information part of that informed consent. And I really appreciate your leadership on this issue. Thank you. And with more countries tackling site characterization, designs, and safety assessments for nuclear waste geologic repositories, I'm curious, are there any new significant concepts and lessons learned that could help inform the U.S. Nuclear Waste Repository Program? Thank you so much for this question, Senator, because there is a lot we are learning from other countries. That includes Finland, Sweden, and Canada. I think when we look out at the broad set of countries enabling this kind of progress through consent-based siting approaches, Canada is really similar to us in particular. Their uh, nuclear waste management organization, NWMO, has had some very uh, impressive progress with regard to siting their repository, which, again, should be you know much harder than siting in-room storage, which is our current goal. Right? Uh, and they have you know, a more similar structure to our government, having provinces like we have states, and, and that really plays a role in our ability to understand the role of both local and state and federal uh, um, engagements, and we think NWMO is making really good progress on that. Good. That's, that's good to know and something for us all to watch. Um, you talked a little bit about this earlier. There's growing support for the advanced reactor technology. Um, but th there's still much to consider as it relates to the accommodation of the back end of the fuel cycle. What are some of the waste implications of new advanced reactors and how the implications uh, could, could they affect the search for workable waste uh, disposal solutions? Thank you for that. Uh, some advanced reactor types reduce the volume and um, lifetimes of spent nuclear fuel. Uh, some reduce the radiotoxicity in the near term, but largely we look at this in the context of making sure that we, the federal government, when we plan to store and dispose of that waste, we have the scientific backing to, uh, to know what to do with all kinds of waste. And we've had a number of decades to prepare for the kinds of fuels and fuel cycles that are coming down the pike here. Uh, and so we're reliant on our national laboratory research, as well as uh, reports recently, like by the National Academies Committee on this topic, uh, to help inform what's, what remains and what's needed. But I think we're in a really good forward-leaning posture around identifying the gaps around how to handle advanced nuclear spent fuel. And you believe that at this juncture, we are more prepared now to accommodate that waste than we had been in the past? Absolutely. Every day, new science is made, new data is, is created at our national labs to support that. And our integrated waste management uh, portfolio in the United States um, in my office also helps to support the storage and transportation components of this, not just the uh, final disposal. Thank you.